Hey, how are you today? Hey, Jimmy, how are you doing? I am good. I, you know, it's interesting. I'm watching this movie. I'm watching your performance. I know you you come from a very different uh, different type of genre, sci-fi with Roswell. I do. What, what was it about this character and getting involved with these film, filmmakers with it, for this film? Yeah, well, you know, my manager sent over the script. I remember exactly where I was when I read it. I was sitting on my friend Emily's couch in Santa Monica. I lay down, I like flopped down, like I should look this over. And I did not move for the next I, I had three hours, however long it took me to read from the first page to the last page of that script. Every single word was throbbing with such poetry and just, it was a visceral reaction that I had. Um, and I remember calling my manager afterwards and was just like, I, I'm, I'm so excited about this project. Um, now, originally I went up for a different role can you guess what role I went up for? I'm thinking, uh, I would probably say, if I were to guess, I'd probably say Jenna's role. It was Jenna's role. It was not Jenna's role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, you know, I, I was thinking that I was going to be also, and there wasn't, you know, because I had read the entire script, I knew what, you know, what, what it was at stake. And yeah. that was frightening to take on. You know, it was a... Um, it was a role that actually was was pretty terrifying to to think about, you know, actually taking on. But at the same time, the writing, Gerard and Christopher are such in, incredible uh, authors and auteurs and filmmakers. And you could just tell in, in the way they were handling this extremely sensitive material that it was just going to be, it was clear just reading that script that it was going to be a project that was so powerful and important. Um, now, of course, Jenna signed on to the project, which is, you know, she was so phenomenal in it. Yeah. But I think they had seen my tape and they responded to something and, you know, reached out about the role of Sarah. And I loved and I was like, oh, actually, this is this is great. I get to be in this film in a very lighthearted way. I can use some of my comedy chops. I can, you know, get to be in a modern version where I'm not you know, playing this this villain and having to go to that kind of place. You know, as an actor, you you have to welcome in what you're taking on. So um, this was a lot easier. It was a lot more. It was a, a different kind of palatable role. Um, but I was so lucky because you know I had a blast shooting it with everybody. Um, you know, my part in the film was really funny and light, and it's this sort of respite from all of this complete anguish and suffering that you're experiencing in the rest of the film and working with Gabby and Janelle they were so funny and warm and generous as actors and it was such an incredible experience working with Gerard and Christopher was just the gift of a lifetime uh, and to work on a project that is this meaningful and this powerful uh, as an, you know any actor would have read that script and just wanted to work work on that for sure. For sure. And, well, I think I think your your role is very important in the sense that she is a kind of character that a lot of us kind of they we don't they don't see what's going around us. We we have these blinders on, and we're like, oh, that's just you know whatever. And they, people of color are like, yeah, yeah, you don't get it. <laughs> yeah, you don't see it. Yeah, and she sees a little bit of it, right? She's. She's not like an idiot, no. But no. I think that what's so great, and not that you were saying that she was an idiot, but I mean, I, I think that what uh, what they did so well, Gerard and Christopher, was that you know they painted a picture of this modern woman who was very intelligent, super well educated. She's friends with these amazing black women. She's in that world with the, you know she's she's navigating the world with her friends, mm -hmm. and she picks up on certain things, and she does not pick up on certain things. And I think this is a testament to how many of of us are consider ourselves woke educated sure. with it you know but actually how much are we actually missing because we don't explicitly experience mm -hmm. uh these microaggressions or you know the ways that this systemic racism is felt um by people of color and i think when you're a white woman it's just there are a lot of things that just wash over without noticing you know so they enter the restaurant and she's aware that they're seated at a table. She's aware that her friends are upset about this and she wants to kind of come in and maybe apologize on behalf of her fellow white woman who like, oh my God, how embarrassing she doesn't. And you know, they're like, this is not for you. This is not your fight to fight for me. 
Um, but then later on, you know, they're at the at the dinner table and Veronica is talking about her room not being clean and, you know, that, and Sarah's just like, that's so weird, you know, my room's impeccable. So, and she doesn't make the connection really, you know. It's just a great like, line, by the way. Yeah, it's so <laughs> weird. Huh. Yeah. So, you know, and I, and I think that that's probably how a lot of people experience the world, that when it's right there in front of them, it's easy to see it. And when it's not in front of you, it's also easy to just kind of let it glance over you. I think that's so true. And I think we, we're lacking, I think in general, people lack that kind of empathy and that kind of mm -hmm. understanding. And it's not that they mean ill or they, they have a, you know, they're like, oh, I F that person, whatever. I think right. there's a, there's just an, un, uh, that not understanding. And I think mm -hmm. that's what a movie like this can do. Absolutely. And unfortunately, often we get to empathy through I mean, compassion, the word is shared passion. It's like shared suffering. You know, you have to acknowledge and accept someone else's suffering to be able to really feel it for them, to relate to it, you know? And so it requires suffering on the part of the person who is empathetic. And I think it's a place that a lot of people don't want to go. I think it's convenient to not go there for a lot of oh. people. It's much more convenient to live in a world where everything is nice, nice, and we don't have to worry about that. Um, but it's perpetuating, you know, kind of a lie in our culture about the way that we treat our citizens um, and the creed that is, the, you know, the, at the foundation of our nation, that all men are created equal. You know, that this is not, this is not self-evident. This truth is no, we can no longer say that we hold this truth to be self-evident. Um, and facing that is hard. It's not comfortable. It's really painful uh, to question your reality. And yet it's the most important thing that we can do at this juncture uh, in order to move forward as a nation. I think so too. Yeah, absolutely. I think you have some great points that are absolutely true. I just feel like it's, it's funny to watch this scene, the scenes that you're involved in and just kind of find that kind of I will say there was a, a huge comfort level. You could tell you guys were just really enjoying the, the nature of what you were experiencing. And that, yes. that played out. Was that easy to find? You know, we did not have a lot of time to do it. I met Janelle, it was like five in the morning. My first day, I, I just walked onto set and she was there and it was like action. And she kind of took me aside and was like, you know, we're best friends. We have this, this, let's just, we'll find it. We'll find it as we go. And she worked, she and Gabby both worked in such a generous and very fluid way where it was not about getting things right. It was about exploring what existed between human beings in an authentic way. And I think that just beelined us straight to a certain level of intimacy because we weren't just arriving there and like, and now it is my line and this is your line. You know, we were exploring. And Gabby is the funniest person in the entire world. She's so comedic. Her comedic timing is unbelievable. She's so imaginative. She's so sensitive and just whip smart. Um, and so working with her, you know, the things that were just coming out of her mouth was just like we would be cracking up. So I think a lot of what you're seeing is completely genuine. It was not us being like, oh, I know I'm like, oh, ha, ha, my friend said something funny. Mm -hmm. It was like, you would get shocked and you would be laughing your butt off. And that's what you see on the film. Uh, and I know that for Janelle, she had just come off of several weeks of probably the most difficult work that you could possibly do as an actor. What she had to put herself through for the sake of this film, yeah. I mean, she had to go to really, 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 really dark and painful psychological, physical, spiritual places uh, that you wouldn't wish on anybody. And we were the last, you know, the, the scenes that I filmed, it was, I think, the last, the last scenes that were being filmed. So when I arrived, I'm all fresh and new and excited. I'm like, hey, are we ready to work? And Janelle, like, comes out of the trailer, like... She's just been through a war zone, literally. And I think to have Gabby and I just having some fun and kicking up our heels. And I think she was really relieved and happy to be able to engage in that way. You know, that was probably just an enormous amount of relief and 
yeah, joy to be had from finally being able to inhabit a happy, strong, secure woman who was with her best friends having a night out. Yeah, well, we got to cut off. They keep trying to cut me off. So but it was an absolute pleasure talking to you. Absolute pleasure. Thank you. Talk to live. <laughs> doing what is the plan we go tonight 911 what is your emergency